Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Catherine. For those of you who don't know, I'm lucky enough to work here. Um, this is our second socially distanced performance and our first musical socially distanced concert. concert. Very excited to see you all. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, I think you've probably covered all the rules. I'm afraid you do need to wear your masks during the concerts, um, unless you're drinking, which is obviously somewhat of a challenge. Um, <laughs> you know, if you do need the loo, feel free to go quietly if you're in this side through the double doors, if you're here through that door, because it avoids queues later on at the um, end. Um, it's all straight through in one go. Um, I'm very excited. It's such a brilliant thing for us. Um, have a lovely evening and give a nice big round welcoming round of applause for the amazing Aunt Amy, our resident Aunt. that I thought was just so apt for right now. And, and so I asked you, and could I read it? And he said, yes. So here it is for you all. When one has lived a long time alone, one wants to live again among men and women, to return to that place where one's ties with the human broke, where the disquiet of death and now also of history, glimmers its firelight on faces, where the gaze of the new baby looks past the gaze of the great granny, and where lovers speak on lips blousy from kissing, that language the same in each mouth, and like birds at daybreak blether the song that is both earth's and heaven's, until the sun has risen, and they stand in a light of being made one, kingdom come, when one has lived a long time alone. In December this year, Beethoven celebrates his 250th birthday. And as a light-hearted celebration of this event, Insieme would like to present Quartetto Serioso, his string quartet, Opus 95 in F major, F minor, composed in autumn of 1810. 18 months earlier, in the spring of 1809, Beethoven was enjoying good times. At the height of his fame, he was offered an annual pension of 4,000 florins by a group of three noblemen. The only condition was that he would continue to live and work in Vienna. With financial security, he could hope to settle down, maybe start a family, get married. Um, he'd be free to pursue whatever projects he wished. Within weeks, however, the French put an end to his dreams of security and happiness. And by July of 1809, we find Beethoven hiding in his brother's cellar with cushions over his ears to preserve what was left of his failing hearing while Napoleon's troops rained artillery over the city of Vienna. And the nobleman's offer? Well, one was to go bankrupt. Another died in battle, and it was only his friend, the Archduke Rudolf, who paid, Be Be who paid his share of Beethoven's pension. Meanwhile, dreams of wedded bliss, complete in tatters.
was a more peaceful place. The economy might have been in poor shape and work for musicians was drying up. But the revolution in Paris felt very distant, little more than a topic of intellectual debate. Besides, Wolfgang Mozart was at the height of his power, and Ludwig Beethoven, a teenager in a distant town, dreaming of future glory. Another well-known musician of Vienna at this time was Anton Stadler, one of the first great players of a new invention, the clarinet. Of disreputable character, financially irresponsible, a fellow Freemason, Stadler and Mozart were good friends and had much in common, and Mozart wrote some of his finest music for the clarinetist to play. We present for you the first movement of Mozart's eternally popular clarinet quintet.
and is never to be performed in public. Those are Beethoven's words. It's a good job we've got you here this evening and not just any old audience. <laughs> but Ludwig, my friend, can you seriously hope to earn your keep by calling your work the Serious Quartet? and then forbidding public performances, and not merely serious, but serioso. The Italian translates as extremely serious, excessively serious. Oh, so serioso. <laughs>
1787, hoping to study with Mozart. The death of his mother called him back to his native Bonn, and by the time he was able to return in 1792, Mozart had just passed away. So Beethoven took lessons instead from the other Titus of the Viennese music scene, Joseph Haydn. However, these great composers and many others owed much to the influence of another man with a very familiar name. In Mozart's words, Bach is the father, we are the children. No, not Johann Sebastian Bach, whose music had long since fallen out of fashion, but the son, Carl Philip Emanuel Bach. A virtuoso on the newly invented forte piano, Emanuel Bach was the exemplar of the Empfangsamer, steel or sensitive style, a style of composition which today we might see as a gently expressive interlude between the complexity of the high baroque and the dramatic rhetoric of the later classical period. However, he was an innovator in his own time and explored the colours of many instruments, both old and new, such as the possibly unique pairing of viola and bass recorder in this trio sonata of 1755.
The sensitivity of the younger Bach certainly influenced Beethoven's writing. But to return to seriousness, extremes of expression and abrupt transitions characterize a serioso quartet more than its moments of tenderness. And if you already feel a bit beaten about by this dense kaleidoscope of a string quartet, the biggest surprise is yet to come. Scholars simply didn't know what to make of the apparently nonsensical final bars of the quartet. Serioso, they emphatically are not. For some, this finale is simply poor quality. The error of a genius, perhaps. Or possibly he's been teasing us all along with the illusion of seriousness. The mask finally falls away and to reveal that it was all a horrible joke. Alternatively, this could be a coming to terms, possibly of his rejected marriage proposals of the previous year. Some have suggested that. Maybe it's opera buffa. It's smiling through your tears. So, what would the birthday boy Beethoven have made of all of this speculation? If he remains true to what we know of his personality, most likely derisive and mocking laughter, a refusal to explain, leaving the conflicts unresolved, the paradoxes unexplained, and abandoning us all in an ironic hall of mirrors, unable to guess which image is reality and which image is reflection. In the words of the teenaged Franz Schubert, Beethoven unites, confuses, and makes no difference between the tragic and the comic, the agreeable and the repulsive, the heroic and the howling, the most holy and the harlequin. So we are left to choose our own interpretation of the quartetto oh so serioso, no so serioso. Insiemi chooses to agree with the composer Randall Thompson. No bottle of champagne was ever uncorked at a better time.
to life with their rehearsals, and hopefully, well, I think definitely from the response, giving you a special hour out of the rest of this mad world that we're in and share their creativity. Um, they were also, they did recording during lockdown. I think they're hoping that they might have managed to record tonight so we can share it a bit more widely or you can revisit it. We'll put it out on one of our Lordsdale House emails. So if you're not already on the Lordsdale House email list, please subscribe. Um, it's really exciting. It is so lovely to have this place alive again. Um, I know many of you donated on your way through our very long booking process, but if anybody um, has any spare cash, if they're using cash at all, um, I have a nice bit of infected plastic container. <laughs> I can sit it in quarantine. I'm going to pop it on the desk. If anybody would like to make a donation, obviously that would be absolutely fabulous. And thank you all for coming and sharing your evening with us. I think another round of applause for our feelings. Thank you.